Hey guys, in today's video I am going to show you how to use four control nodes inside Unreal 5 in Blueprints. And make sure to watch the video until the end, because at the end I am going to use all these four flow control nodes to create a bullet counting and rewarding functionality. If you are creating a shooter game, this will be perfect for you. So let's get into it. Let's get started with sequence. As you see here, I have my construction script in a blueprint and uh, you see a sequence node. So what does a sequence node do? Basically when uh, it's fired, it does first zero, connects to this one, then after this is executed, it goes to then one and executes this part of the code. So because this is a construction script, uh, this happens uh, instantly here. So what do we have here? There are a lot of functionality that I'm going to show you using the flow control nodes, but in the construction script we have uh, the functionality to change the mesh material for example, or to change the static mesh itself. So how do we do that? Let me show you. In uh, change uh, color, if I click here, as you see the material of this uh, cube changes and it covers as well. So if I check it here, it, it just changes. Also if you go to mesh type and change the box to sphere, our mesh changes as well. And I can also change the color on this mesh as well. So. How, how did I do this? I, I achieved it first using sequence node, so I'm doing these two things one after another, and then I use the branch node. So the branch node is basically an if statement. If this boolean color change is true, then it executes this part of the blueprint, and if it's false, it executes this one. And this here, this node, is just changing the material. To a material that is uh, red or blue. I think this one is uh, red and this one is blue. So if I change this boolean here, color change, as you saw, it changes the material. It's pretty simple. An if statement controlled by this, by this boolean value. And the other thing is uh, here where I change the static mesh. So this one is a bit more complicated than the branch node. So this switch on enum mesh type is uh, actually we first need to create an enum. So how do we create uh, enum? Let's go into our uh, content browser and here as you see I already have uh, enum created. This is enumeration. So how do we create one? If you right click uh, on the free space here and go to blueprints and then you see here you have enumeration. So click it and you create new one. Name it something but uh, now you can add for example uh, box and then you add an R for sphere and as you see this is absolutely the same as the one I created. And this is this is just a list. This is just a list that uh, has these uh, names. And then in your blueprint you can create a uh, variable, but before that let's just name this uh, let's name it test enum because we are going to use this name. And now when you create a variable uh, and go to variable type, you can just type test enum, the name of the enum that you created. And here it is. Now you press uh, left click and now you have it here as a variable. Uh, it's the same thing I did with this mesh type. I just uh, changed the variable type to my enum file name. And now if I uh, get it here and drag it and then type switch and then you see you have switch on test enum. And here you have the box and sphere I created. And for example, if I change uh, this here or add another one, let's say uh, call and just save it. 
and you will see it added cone here immediately. So this is just a list, so you can add options here. And based on these options, or on, uh, based on this mesh type that I created, sphere, box, and so on, I can actually do some functionality. For example, on sphere, I just get this, uh, in our viewport, this uh, static mesh component here, and then I just change it mesh. So I grab here and do set static mesh and I just change the mesh here and you can pick any mesh. And the same with the box. So I, uh, in the sphere I picked a sphere mesh and at the box I picked a box mesh. It's pretty simple so far. So now you know how to use sequence, branch and enumeration. So next let's go to the event graph and here I have a few things created already. Again I'm using sequence and I use sequence just so uh, I can have everything more organized. Yes, you can actually just uh, uh, do it one after another but as you see here I have uh, different options. So I cannot, uh, if, I, if I do this for example it, it gets a bit too much, uh, too many um, connections and it, it doesn't look very pretty. So I used sequence to make everything look a lot more organized. And again, let's go to the first one. The first one is mesh change every second for six seconds. So I have delay and if you watched my previous tutorial that I created a timer, uh, basically a counting uh, countdown. Here I actually create just a counting. It's very simple. So uh, I actually created uh, here, sorry, uh, here. However, in here I use the same note do n. This is basically what uh, I used in my previous tutorial and it does uh, this exit it triggers it six times and I can change this uh, however uh, to whatever I want. I can do 50 or whatever but for now it's six and it next is flip-flop. So let's get from the start. We have delay which is one second so this part here will execute every second. Then this part here will execute only six times. So it will execute every second for six seconds and this part here the flip-flop so the first time it triggers so the first time it goes here and it will trigger A and it will change the mesh type to sphere and then B and it will trigger and it will change the mesh type to box so the first second it will be sphere the second second it will be box and it will basically it will flip. The, the name of the node is pretty self-explanatory, it will just flip-flop. And I can show you this actually first before we can change the mesh type because here in construction script we, uh, we have it here made like mesh type and we change it here like sphere and uh, box. However, uh, we actually need to change it uh, all the time. So, uh, what we can do in in event tick is create in the sequence one more pin right here, and then get the sphere and uh, change uh, actually set static mesh, and you set the static mesh based on. Uh, the switching that we have here. So I can just copy paste this part and go to event tick here, paste it and uh, just, uh, actually I don't even need this, uh, do this and connect then three connected to switch on enum mesh type and now if we play the game, this will switch every second, as you see. And 
it will switch six times and it switched six times and now uh, it, it won't switch anymore because as I said before we will switch only six times I can make it more so let's move to the next one the do and note is pretty simple right the next one the next one is the gate one so gate is used uh, basically as a gate <laughs> pretty 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 simple uh, so if you uh, it executes everything that goes into the enter however you have open and close and you have toggle and start closed so we are starting closed so everything that comes from here it will stop to the gate node this thing here won't execute it will execute only when we open the the gate so we open the gate when we enter this box here this is our collision box so we will open the gate when on component begin overlap and this is our collision box once we are uh, inside the box this part of the uh, code will execute so this is basically a world timer the same I did uh, in my previous video however this time I actually count up and not from uh, 30 for example I, I don't count down so uh, let me showcase you uh, how it works if I play the game and come here it will start counting and if for example I exit the box it will stop and you don't see the collision box of course because it's invisible but if I get closer it will continue counting and when I go um, further it will stop it will stop because if I go further if I exit if I end overlap the box collision I close the gate so the gate won't work anymore so everything that comes here will stop to this gate and this part of the code won't be executed once I exit this box so the final one is this spawn explosion once so if I play the game as you see probably you have already seen it but here you have explosion that just spawned so this is spawned because uh, coming here you have delay and you have delay 5 seconds then you have do once and this will do it only once no matter even if you're in event tick which ticks every single moment it will do it only once this is a very uh, cool node that you can use in event node or any ticking node uh, I mean not event node event uh, tick event sorry and uh, here you just spawn explosion and for example if you want to reset it you can actually reset it so if we do delay again and delay it like one and we can reset it so if I play the game now you will wait for five seconds and it will spawn this explosion and then it will spawn the explosion every second as you see maybe not every second but uh, let me see what did I type every second yeah it will spawn it every single second or rather uh, six seconds maybe uh, we, we can actually check this if I uh, play it in the viewport and uh, a little uh, trick how to check your uh, blueprint is go here while you are playing the game uh, pick the uh, name of the actor in the scene which is full control and now as you see it uh, actually plays it every five seconds so uh, it comes here it triggers it wait one second reset it and play it again so again if I uh, do here let me actually show you So now it triggers, waiting 5 seconds, now BAM, it resets again and you wait 
and again so this is how you actually use the duance node you can reset it every second or you can have another condition here and then uh, do it like uh, connected to a set and uh, you can create anything basically so these are the four control nodes that i wanted to show you and uh, next as i promised in the beginning of the video i'm going to show you how to create a bullet counting mechanic as well as rewarding mechanic so let's get into that so to create a bullet mechanic first we need to go to our first person uh, blueprint it's very simple uh, go here into the world setting into the game mode and in select game mode here in default uh, sorry default pawn class you can just uh, click on this icon so it will find the first person uh, character blueprint we can open this and now here uh, is our action button so right now if i play the game so here if we play the game and if you take this uh, weapon you can shoot right and this is uh, the basic mechanic created from unreal let me first put this to new window close it and now uh, this is our primary action button this is the left mouse button and you're wondering why is this called primary action or uh, input action primary action why why is this called like that so let me show you a little trick or something that is very useful if you go to settings and project settings and let me maximize this and go to input here in the action mapping you see a primary action so you can actually map any button and give it a name here for example i can add another one and call it uh, what do we call it heavy attack for example and here i can actually map it to right mouse button and now if i go to my blueprint and type here uh, heavy attack here it is and this represents my right mouse button and i can do any action and when i press the right mouse button in the game it will trigger this uh, event here so that aside uh, this is our primary action and this actually uses event dispatchers that i actually explained how to use them in my blueprint uh, communication video that you can check uh, check out here it will uh, pop up here so uh, you can check out this video and see how this is uh, used and created but for now what we want is um, to create a bullet mechanic and as you see probably have noticed here i already have created some variables so we need a few variables first we need the bullets and then the max bullets is armed this actually i'm going to explain this later and transfer bullets and max shooting so these things are the variables that we need to create the mechanic itself and in viewport if you notice here i have created this uh, bullet text and uh, bullet count and this is just a text if you go to add and type text you create a text render and i just placed it uh, here you don't see it uh, when i play the game because if i select them i already have um, set them hidden in game but if i uncheck this save and compile and play the game now uh, here in the right corner you see i have bullets or rather um, numbers that represent my bullet count uh, not yet actually but uh, they will so let's make this happen in a construction script uh, we need first to uh, create this in construction script so i can uh, show you uh, you can just uh, take 
this one which is the bullet and uh, go to construction script and uh, yeah just uh, drag it here and set text and I can set this text to be my bullets and then I can do the same for uh, this uh, number here which is my maximum bullets the same thing set text and get the maximum not shooting but bullets and now in the viewport I have 0 and 30 why is that because uh, I have uh, maximum uh, bullets uh, I need maximum bullets uh, health right uh, transfer bullets okay I didn't <laughs> Uh, put the right thing here so now I have 13 one but maximum bullets health needs to be for example 260 as you see it changed immediately and I can do 15 for example if I want so uh, let's do 15 and uh, let's also do the bullets health to be like 30 for example this is just an example and now in uh, event graph here as you see uh, we have this action that is our shooting left mouse button uh, what needs to happen when we shoot so when we shoot we want our bullets to decrease right however before that happens we actually uh, need a, a branch node so let's get a branch node if you press and hold B if you watch my previous video I have it uh, in the end on the tricks part if you press and hold B and uh, press the left mouse button you can uh, spawn this branch so I can do this and uh, is armed I will get is armed here and connect it to the condition so this is armed I we need this why because right now actually le let's continue and I will show you later why we actually need this uh, if we go to bullets I will get bullets and I will decrease the bullets by one so you can either do this uh, actually minus minus decrement and now every time I uh, shoot I press the left mouse button I will decrease the bullets uh, by one but let's get first uh, event tick I actually uh, don't have it so event tick let's get event tick and uh, just connect uh, the construction script things that we created here we need them to update every tick here for this to work so now every tick we update uh, these numbers here so if I play the game now and press the uh, left mouse button nothing happens why nothing happens because I this is not uh, th this bullion is false but let's uh, for the uh, sake of the example push it uh, and it's now positive now play the game and if I press the uh, left mouse button it uh, decreases as you see it's negative and uh, it's getting <laughs> it's getting wild so let's exit the game first and now we have this functionality right but uh, first we need to actually sh uh, be able to shoot only when we pick up this one right because if you play the game and you start shooting and you don't have a weapon that that's just crazy <laughs> so here if you uh, select this uh, weapon or just go to rifle blueprint and uh, double click it now here I'm going to uh, put a uh, I'm going to uh, create this boolean I, I'm going to change it to be positive and it's in this uh, event here because this event in uh, this blueprint basically what it does is on begin overlap so when our player overlaps 
this sphere around this uh, mesh, I don't know if you can see it here, this is occlusion sphere, so if you overlap it, this mesh, uh, it, it casts to first person uh, character and actually snaps this mesh to our uh, hand sockets, so you see that we are holding it and uh, it bends the event. As I said, I already explained how the event dispatcher works, so I'm not going to do that right now, but this is the fun function I want, this is the event I want. So when this event triggers, so when we get the weapon, I want to change this variable to be true. So how can I do that? So I'm already casting into the first person character, so I need to grab this and uh, type is armed. So we can just set it here and set it to true. So once we grab the weapon, this will be true. And now compile and uh, let's play the game and see what happens. If I Okay, uh, it didn't work because I already put it to true, but uh, it needs to start uh, with false uh, value. So, compile and now play the game. And if I try to, to do, to shoot, nothing happens, but if I grab the gun, now I can shoot and it decreases. Now, uh, it decreases to negative and uh, that's not uh, very good, right? So what we are going to do next? So next we are going to make it so uh, the bullets uh, only go to zero and not uh, more uh, less than zero. So it, it's pretty simple to do that. Again, we can uh, use the branch node. If you press B, click and branch node. And now we can do a condition here again a full uh, control node branch condition if statement pretty simple right if bullets are um, less or equal or rather uh, let's do let's do uh, greater greater than zero we can shoot we can shoot and uh, everything is okay however if they are not we won't do we will do absolutely nothing for now and let's organize this a bit more, like this, it looks better. Uh, now, if I play the game, grab the weapon and shoot 15 times, now not only I cannot uh, shoot, but my number doesn't change below zero. So, pretty useful, isn't it? So what's next? Uh, we already can uh, decrease the bullets and we can also like we won't be able to shoot when it reaches zero. Now we need to uh, make the functionality where uh, we uh, can reward and get some of these bullets here to be transferred to our uh, using bullets, the ones that we shoot with. So how do we do that? So now we just need to create our rewarding functionality. So how do we do that? It's very, very simple. First, we need another uh, function or rather event like this one. And I already showed you how to create it. So let's do it. Let's do it again. Settings, project settings and go to input. And now here in the action mapping, we're going to create rewarding. Now we're going to bind it to R because this is what you use in every shooter game to reward. And now if we go to our blueprint and type reward, here it is our event. So what happens if I press R? Usually, uh, let me just actually increase this to 260. So when you press R, you're going to take some of these bullets and transfer them to here until it reaches 15 and if this is one we need to transfer 14 bullets from here and to add them to here it's pretty simple so now uh, we use this transfer bullets uh, we, we have a variable called transfer bullets and you can create one it's just integer and now 
you can just set it we need to set it first or rather let's do a sequence if we do a sequence now everything will be a lot more organized so if we press r let's just uh, set the transfer bullets first and uh, these transfer bullets will be uh, pretty simple to set so we get our bullets and we get uh, subtract and connect it to here and we need 15 so we need 15 to be uh, to subtract uh, bullets from 15 so connected to transfer bullets and why do we uh, why do we use 15 because here the maximum is filled 15 uh, our bullets when we start they are 15 we can do it uh, in a better way but let's do it this way for now and now uh, what does this do so if you have 15 bullets and you haven't shot even once so you just get your weapon and press R for a reward. What will happen? Nothing will happen because if you subtract 15 from 15, it will be zero and the transfer bullets will be zero. So there will be no transaction between these uh, values. So that's uh, so far so good. So next, let's uh, subtract uh, or rather add bullets uh, to our uh, bullet value here how do we do that or should we actually first subtract bullets from here so let's do this first let's subtract bullet from our maximum bullet and we can use max bullets help and set this and connect this to here uh, make it organized and now uh, how, how do we subtract it so we need the max bullet held so get it and from this we need to subtract the transfer bullets so get the transfer bullets and now minus and connect it and now it will just subtract the transfer bullets from our uh, maximum bullets and again in the third one we need to set our bullets and we do the same thing like this one here but uh, except we get bullets and this time we actually add and uh, again we need the transfer bullets and add them here we subtract them from the maximum bullets and add them to our current bullets from this value so we subtract them from here and add them to here so these three uh, functionalities here you set the transfer bullets then you su subtract them from the maximum bullets and then add them to the current bullets so compile and if we play the game now if I reload you will see it works It works pretty nicely except there is actually a problem we cannot notice it right now but uh, for example let me show you so now we just need to create a condition and also uh, we need to change uh, the order of, of these two however I'm going to show you what happens first and uh, then we're going to change it and you see why we need to change it so first let's create a condition again hold the B button for branch and connect it to here and uh, let's get the true value or rather let's go with the false to here and this condition is basically if our max bullets are less uh, than our transfer bullets so if they are less we're going to create uh, to, to do this and uh, set it to zero why are we doing this so let's think about it first let me organize this a bit let's think about it our transfer bullets are created by uh, 
dividing, not dividing, but subtracting bullets from 15, right? And this is our transfer bullet. But imagine if our bullets are zero and we subtract 15, uh, if we subtract zero from 15, it will be 15, right? But imagine our maximum bullets health are 14. So how are we uh, subtracting 14 from 15? It will give us a negative value, right? And we cannot have a negative value. So if the max bullets held are less than the transfer bullets, so if they are 14 and our transfer bullets are uh, 15, for example, we are going to just uh, make our max bullets held to zero because we are going to transfer them all to our active bullets. And probably some of you now realize why we need to switch the order, but let's keep going. Now here we also need to con uh, create the same uh, condition and let's uh, control and uh, maybe you cannot do this <laughs> from here. Okay, just connect it like this and uh, again connect it to false and if it's true we just need to select bullets and assign them uh, assign the maximum bullets held right so now it's pretty easy right uh, uh, however let me show you what happens if i take the weapon and now everything is zero Everything is zero because we set the maximum bullet health to zero before we actually set our bullet count. So we basically uh, subtract, uh, make it zero before we actually add it to here. So yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Uh, let's just change the order. So here, get uh, this one here and this one here and now and tada we cannot shoot anymore the only problem with this solution is let's say we take the weapon shoot once and reward as you see it's 15 we can keep shooting but what if i press a reward right now it will turn it to zero. Why? Because we already have our maximum bullets to zero and nothing is stopping us to execute all of this and getting our bullets here to zero. Nothing is stopping us. So we actually need another branch. So hold B, click. We need a branch here. So if it's true, we can do it. And this branch uh, will be from maximum bullets held if we get them and if we check if they are less or equal to zero or rather more than zero in this case greater than zero now we can uh, execute the reward if it's not nothing will happen so now if I take it and reward and if I press R nothing has happened we cannot revolt anymore because it's uh, our maximum bullets are zero and uh, we cannot revolt so this is our rewarding functionality that we created using the flow control uh, nodes it's a pretty fun and interesting thing to explore and create so you can have some uh, play with it, play around with it and there are different ways to create actually this functionality. You can create it in many ways. So try to recreate it in a different way and maybe post in the comment section a different way that you created it. Maybe a more optimized or better fun uh, better like functionality wise way. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some of your solutions. So. At the end, there is actually a mistake in all of this. And if you play the game, you can notice it. And 
please uh, try to notice it yourself and maybe even try to fix it however I'm going to fix it and show it to you right now but before that pause the video and try to find it yourself have you paused the video have you found it have you fixed it well if you haven't or if you have I will still show you how to fix it and what the problem is right now so if you play the game and shoot a bit let's uh, get our maximum bullets a bit you see now I had like 13 or 12 and it transferred and turned to 1 instead of adding uh, the, this value so why this why, why does this happen I'm going to show you just now so the whole thing comes from this condition right here and when we're setting the bullets right now if you have max bullets held uh, which is uh, less than transferred bullets and if it's true we directly set the bullets this is just not how you do it this is not the, the way you are going to do it because as you saw here when you go to in this bit, video when you go to 12 and just try to uh, reward it's set to 1 and this is set to 0 and this happens because uh, uh, let's see what's going on so the max bullet health will be less than transfer bullet for sure so it will trigger this one and right here in the video clip if we uh, uh, get back you see this is one and what we are going to do is transfer this one as you see here we will set the bullets we will set this number here uh, to be max bullets health which is currently one and it will be set directly here which is a mistake instead so if I play and you do it you see it, it, it sets to one and then of course we set it to zero here so that's all good but what we need to do is actually get the bullets and add we need to add the max bullets health to the bullets and now now you're going to notice that it's fixed so uh, for uh, testing purposes let's make this uh, number bullets to be 12 and the max uh, the max bullet health to be 1 so in this case we're going to replicate exactly uh, this condition here so if we play the game and now we try to reward it doesn't happen right I don't even need to like press reward and everything happens the way it should however if I go back here and just do it max bullets health like we had it before and play the game and you see now it gets to 1 instead of adding 1 so instead of setting to the max bullets health we just need to add so this is going to fix our problem and let's test it one last time and make this uh, something like 20 for example and let's uh, actually why is it not uh, uh, doing it 15 uh, ah, I said max shooting not max bullet health let's set it to 12, uh, 20 and play the game so yeah everything works perfectly fine and now you have a rewarding system hey congratulations for sticking to the end of this video did you solve the problem yourself even if you didn't that's okay I'm very grateful for you for sticking to the end of this video and watching it all please if you like this video and if you learned something today 
smash the like button and if you want to learn more about Unreal 5 and what you can do inside this amazing engine, please subscribe to my channel, the link is in the description below or you can just hit the big red button that says subscribe. So thank you so much and I'm very grateful for every single one of you. And yeah, this is for this video and thank you for watching, see you in the next one.